once player and when they click on the, the button they can hear the audio uh, but once the audio has finished they can't restart it. Okay. So yeah it, is, yeah it is a bit like a teleprompter yeah yeah it's similar to that. I've never thought to use it for that but it could be done I suppose yeah. Um, yeah. Now, the I should say with this once player that um, if, the, if the student were to reload the page, the once player would again be enabled. So it's really for simulating tests. It's not uh, not particularly strict. Oh, have I used? Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, have I used the error? Oh, yeah, right, right. The error. Okay, thanks. Thanks very much, Alex. Useful information. So yeah, this is the uh, the once player here that we're talking about. This here. And this here is a stopwatch. Okay, so you just press start and uh, it'll start counting. You can press stop and it'll stop. So this is you know, useful for, I guess, gamifying uh, courses in Moodle. We talk a lot about gamifying recently, and uh, that's uh, uh, it's quite effective. Yeah, students enjoy using those widgets. Right, removing the teacher. Okay, so um, the 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 rationale behind this is to give the students more airtime. So I notice in my classes that the students. Um, they're interested in learning English, but when they first join my courses, they have really a very little, they've had very little chance to actually speak English. And when they when they do try, if I say to them, please talk about your weekend, uh, what I get back is you know, very poor quality. If I were to ask them this question and say, please type about your weekend, uh, you know, we get a much better response. So um, and this is purely that a lack of practice. They just, they just have the opportunity to speak English. So in my classes, I think it's really a waste of time if I'm doing all the talking and they're just listening because this is just, you know, uh, continuing on with the old problem. Um, uh, another, 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 you know, reason why we rem removing the teacher is a good idea is it frees the students of scrutiny. They don't, they don't feel like they're being watched or that the whole class is listening to them. Uh, and that makes it easier for them to talk. And it also lets students be teachers. They actually, they will actually correct each other. Um, and uh, offer each other advice or, or a word that the student doesn't know, uh, which uh, which is you know really uh, makes a class kind of you know a peer control class and decentralizes everything. Um, so that that's the reason why we do uh, this removing the teacher. And Japanese learners are notorious for lack of confidence in speaking. Yes, yeah, and that, yeah, that's actually another point is is the confidence. I think if you go to some countries, you know. Um, their English isn't particularly good either, but they don't worry about it. They just, you know, they just get out there and talk, um, and that, of course, improves their English. So, okay, let's move forward here. So, talking activities based on Poodle, right? So, we'll go through a number of these, and um, uh, I may just drop into. I think I'll just drop into the screencast mode now, which I haven't had a chance to, to practice yet. But let's do it. So that uh, I'll just take you through where where you might do these courses yourself, uh, try these activities yourself, just while we're doing this presentation. So here we go, screen sharing. Start screen share. Oh, it says initializing. This usually takes 30 to 60 seconds. Okay. Now let's move forward while we do that. I know. Okay. There we go. We're good to go. Okay. So this is our our live demo course here at demo.poodle.com. And you can see I've created a course here for you guys to use. It's called MOOC 2014. And the usernames are here. MOOC user 01, MOOC user 02, all the way to MOOC user 50. And the password is always 123456. So you can just log in there. Choose a, choose a password. Choose, maybe perhaps type the, pass, type the username into the uh, chat window here on WizIQ so that we know that you're using that one. And then get started. And let me just go into the course and show you these activities that we're talking about. Okay, so here is the MOOC 2014 stuff. So these are the activities that we're going to talk about. Um, this is a drill, 100 questions, drill set in 20 seconds, drawing, draw the man. I want you just to uh, uh, just have a look at these as I'm talking. I don't think you need to actually watch my WizIQ slide um, while I'm talking about these activities. You can probably just navigate yourself. Um, I'll show you this one here just quickly so we get an idea. This is Halloween Scary Faces. I, I use this in my own classes at Halloween time just for fun, just to kind of build a, uh, a fun activity, a fun atmosphere. I have the students make their scariest face. 
and uh, we take a photo of it using the, uh, the Poodle thing. So if you click on Add Entry here, uh, it will show us a Poodle web shot, web camera snap thingy. Here it comes. And it usually takes a minute to initialize. Oh, well we may we may be uh, sorry I may be out of luck because my camera is being used by Wiz IQ, so actually I can't take a photo. But could, should I take a photo? I would click here like this. The photo would be, would be um, taken. Justin, you should be able to do it. it. By the way, you should be able to do it. I've I've seen myself um, on a double camera. Let's see if it works for you as well. Have you tried? Well, let me give it. A, let me give it another go. I'll, I'll try. I'll try again. Here we go. Let's see what happens. No, but it's okay. It, it may be maybe oh, just okay. the desktop client has done something to oh, my interesting. But that's not, that's not so, so important. Oh, I um, think it did. I, I think, think it'll work for you guys. So please give it. I think you. Uh, I thought I you, saw your face coming. You up. might be able to go in. Yeah. <laughs> um. There we go. No, but it's all right. Um. Just uh, it, I think it'll work for you guys. So please just go in there and. Um, it's probably just having the WizIQ on at the same time or having just installed it um, does that. But once you guys have taken your photographs, uh, there should be a list of all your photos here. This is the Poodle database field working in the Moodle database activity. This is, so this is where you make a form where the video recorder was, and then the, the users or the students will see a list of other people's submissions, uh, like a very limited cut down form. Okay. Um, all right, let me go back to WizIQ, and you, you people uh, can. Feel free to mosey around on the course while I while I talk about the activities. The chat video and attendee list has dropped to the bottom left. Just pop it out. Um, okay. Am I okay with that? I think so. Okay. So um, the first set of activities that I, I I'm going to talk about is two students on one computer. Simple non-graded activities promoting collaboration and communication. So uh, what I often use is I have my students, what I actually, what I often do is I have my students use the one computer. So rather than, you know, each look at their own screen, they, they just share a computer. And that physical proximity, it really um, encourages communication, just, just naturally. They just start to talk about the activity. And if I say, oh, you know, I want you to do this, and student B, for example, didn't understand, you know, they, they end up talking about that activity to each other. And if you can encourage them to speak in English, um, they're, you know, even, even without doing the activity, you know, they're talking about the activity or communicating about the activity in English. And um, so I use this a lot. And once my students become, uh, have problems logging an invert login, please try again. Um, okay. Let's see what I've got I must admit, my this, this is the demo server resets itself at midnight every night. It's the I call it the Cinderella server, but you know for some reason today it reset itself at nine o'clock and the presentation started at ten. So I was kind of you know rushing to get it all set up. It is possible I uh, I messed up the logging thing. So I'll just just try logging in myself as one of these users and see if it works. Um, bear with me. Sorry, I'm on a different computer to do this so that I. Uh, also, it's a bit slow because we've got 40 odd people. We have about nine people going in there. Um, okay. It, it, can, can you just type in there if you're having problems? Oh, Tom, you're okay? Okay, I think if Tom's okay, you're probably all okay. It's probably just a, uh, a password thing. MOOC user 01 to. Let me just try here. Um, okay, if, I think if Tom's okay, you, you should all be okay, so I'll just leave you to it. Uh, sorry, Ralph. Just Let's try a different user. I need to move on. Okay, so here's the first activity. This is a simple activity, sample activity, say yes. And in this activity, I asked the students to make their partner say yes eight times in one minute. Ralph, it might be okay. I, um, I'm not sure. Well, let me try. MOOC user zero. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six.
Oh, okay. Well, uh, no, the, the the number the there's one two three four five six is the password. Uh, so for everybody, it's MOOC user. Um, say 37, for example, 37, and then the password would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay? Password is always 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's it. Okay, I just logged in as user 7 using that system, and uh, it was okay. Okay, um, so in this activity, I asked them to, to say yes eight times, or to make their partner say yes eight times. For example, you have a pen, don't you? Uh, you can sing karaoke, can't you? Uh, you like me, don't you? Um, and they have this t countdown time here, which counts down from one to zero. And just just having the countdown timer there, which is the poodle part of it. Uh, it really it really makes it feel gamey and fun. They have a button to click and it changes and you know there's a time limit uh, and they enjoy the activity even though it's very very simple and you know you could you could do it without pool um, but just having that little countdown timer there really makes it kind of fun for the students and they're doing it on the same computer and so that works very nicely. I see people are going in, so that, that's good. I'm very happy about that. Okay, now here's another activity in the same ilk. It's two students on one computer. And again, we're using the countdown timer, but this time we've set the countdown timer to 20 seconds. Because you can configure um, at what, from how many seconds you want the timer to count down. And this is a super poodler Tom Rawson. He's also here in Nagasaki. And he's set up Will I be able to get to my regular browser because now I can't participate at the Poodle site? I'm locked into WizIQ. Uh, excuse me, I'm not sure. I'll leave Nelly to, to deal with perhaps some of that technical stuff. Um, so now, when Nelly types, she's actually typing as Justin Hunter. It looks like it's me typing, but I, I don't type anywhere near as quickly or as well as Nelly. So she's, she's actually answering a lot of those questions in there using my name. Um, Right, sample activity sat in 20 seconds. So this is a, a tongue twister activity. Tom says, Peter Piper picked a pick of pickled peppers five times. And the students have to you know, watch Tom say, Peter Piper picked a pick of pickled peppers five times. Well, now he's in the pink. And, uh, they, and then after that, just a few times, then they try and say it uh, within 20 seconds. And you know, when the two students are working on the same computer, one, one person's got the timer, the other person's you know, saying the um, uh, the tongue twister, you know, it works very well, it's very simple and it's fun. And the um, uh, another feature of this particular activity is that it's very, it's a very good precursor. The timer doesn't appear in the pair work. Activity, I probably have removed the timer because I don't tend to do something different with that. Um, my coupon, what is that? Up here in the peer work. Okay. Um, what peer work is something that is which is quite fun, and I'd like to try that later on if you're if you're all up for it. Uh, the one with yes no questions just goes in turn. Oh okay. Um, oh okay. Uh, right. Okay. So that's probably just my mistake. I, I had to create this course from some some other courses, so I uh, I did some different stuff. Oh, it appeared now, and perhaps it's just slow. This is a good activity as a precursor to video recording or audio recording because uh, it's very non personal. You don't have to say anything about yourself, you don't really have to think of how to speak the English, you just have to concentrate on saying the tongue twister. And especially when you first begin audio or video recording with your students, those very non threatening and very simple you know, uh, exercises. Um, enable them to learn how to use the Poodle recorders and how to do the activities without having to worry about English at the same time and uh, or, or, or the you know worrying about how people are viewing what they say or what they say or how they say it. Um, so that's something quite useful uh, about these tongue twister kind of activities. Red lorry, yellow lorry. Yeah, yeah, there's actually some um, some really good tongue twisters that are very short, like one that my students like which is surprisingly 
easy. To, looks easy, but it isn't. There's good blood, good blood, bad blood. And for Japanese students, that's, you know, they, they almost hurt themselves trying to say that. Okay, and these are flashcards. Okay, oh, I, I, oh, I see what you're saying. You said probably, yeah, that's right. I, on this one here, I may have actually forgotten to put the timer in. Yeah. Um, okay, this is, we saw the flashcards previously, but uh, you can set these flashcards up to draw the question data from uh, a, a Moodle matching question. So if you make a Moodle matching question with 100 you know, uh, matches, uh, then uh, you can set Poodle up to actually draw the, qu the question data using some of these flashcards. And then because the flashcards are embedded using a, a filter string, you can actually just drop them anywhere in Moodle. It's very, it's very simple just to, just to drop them anywhere. Let me just do a little screencast here and show you that. Um, start screen share. something I should have done before. Okay, very good. Um, now I'll turn editing on because I'm an admin. I'll go into this uh, this activity here, which is the drill 100 questions activity, which has flashcards. And I think it has, it doesn't have a time, but it should have a time. Oh, there is a time in here. Okay. Um, okay. And this is the filter string. Okay, so there's actually a, a number of ways you can actually make these these filter filters appear in your in your site. But this is the longhand way where I type it all out. I'm sorry, I, I document this just a little bit better because it's still, it's still a bit esoteric. But here we have Q name, and this is basic Q and A. And this is actually the name of the matching question in Moodle from which these quizzes are drawn. So if you make a matching question, name it something with no spaces like this. Uh, you can actually create a flash a set of flashcards very quickly and then um, head off elsewhere. So let me just make a go back to where I was, back to where I once belonged. And here, here we've got a, uh, a forum. I'm going to totally monster this forum up because I'm going to add this flashcards into the forum here. Although I, I'm not exactly how I should be using this forum. And I drop the uh, I drop the flashcards in there like that. Okay, and when I post a forum, yeah, I'm gone. You can see those flashcards now show up in a forum post. So any, anywhere that you can you can access an HTML area, you can actually add these widgets, which uh, really uh, open up a lot of opportunities. So let me just stop sharing my session now. Okay, and moving along. Now the next set of activities that I'm going to talk about is peer contribution. So this is where students um, uh, they prepare something or submit something. And then they each, you know, they, they each respond. Then they can actually see what the other person has has submitted, and they can respond to it or just consume it. Um, and this is really this is really good because the students work hard to prepare something and they enjoy seeing it afterwards. But it also helps to kind of build the class. They get to know each other. They get they 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 uh, they experience. They have fun together. Um, and you know, some students act out and do a really poor picture or um, a terrible video recording or make a, a funny photograph of themselves. Uh, and uh, it makes a class fun and really brings them together. So especially when I have new classes, we do these kind of activities quite often um, and it really helps to build the class. Oh yeah, I'm, in, I'm actually in the upstairs room here. My, my daughters are downstairs and my son's downstairs and somebody is practicing the piano. Um, there's an odd, odd chance I might have to go and um, change a nappy. Um, should that happen, I will take... I will take the webcam so you can see that <laughs> the threat um okay so the first activity i want to talk about is a forum uh, and this is a, a an audio forum so you can go to the a video forum sorry so you can go to the forum and oh sorry it's an audio forum I'll be, I'll be okay so this is an uh, an audio forum so this is an audio recorder so when i say an audio forum i, I ask the students to record themselves using audio but in actual fact, they could choose here from the uh, icons on the editor. They could choose uh, video if they wish, which is the web camera icon here. 
um, and very simple, you know, the actual instructions to the students are talk about your earliest memory, record yourself talking about your earliest memory, talk for about one minute and listen to your friend's stories and reply to them too. This is actually the activity I just went to a minute ago and showed you how to insert flashcards into them. Um, but if you want to go in there and quickly and leave a leave a little a little recording, don't have to talk about anything especially, um, then we can go and see that actually it's working and you can go through the process yourself for uh, doing audio recordings into the forum. do that myself. I'll actually go in there and do another activity, but perhaps I won't do this one. I'll just keep going because I think there's probably more interesting activities uh, to do. And this is one that works very well, and this is the database activity, which I spoke about previously. I actually showed you with the, the, the scary faces. But in this case, we've set the database activity to draw a picture, not, um, uh, not take a photograph or not record a video. And the students are tasked with listening to the audio and then drawing what has been described in the in the uh, in the audio recording. And then when they submit that recording, uh, it, it shows up in a list like this, and you can see each of the other students' recordings. So I'll try that now. Now I'll I'll just drop into my screen sharing and do that. And if you wish to do that also, um, please do. Maybe somebody already has. I see that there's not many chats going on, so perhaps that's because people are actually in the course, which is fine. Okay, so here we are in our course. And the one we're going to do now is draw and draw and draw the man. No one's added any entry, so I'll, I'll add one. Um, so you click on Add Entry, and then it takes a wee, wee moment to load, but you'll have this whiteboard. This is actually not the standard Poodle whiteboard. This is actually the JavaScript one. I've just set that up for some reason. Um, had you listened to the audio recording, you would have seen that uh, the man, it's kind of a fashion one. He's, he's wearing you know, the wrong things. Um, let's just change our, our color. Right. Okay, and these different things. But I'll just draw, you know, like this. Okay. Uh, set it to auto save, which um, there's merits and demerits for doing that, but it's set to auto save. And when I save and view, uh, there's my man. Okay, Poodle Admin's man. So if you all go in there and draw a man, then uh, there'll be a list, big list of men here uh, on the list section. View list. And we'll have a whole big screen of men. Now, when your students do this in class, it's really fun after you've drawn your picture because they can't see the other pictures until they've drawn their own. You have to draw your picture first, and then you can see the other pictures. Uh, and boy, that's fun when they go in there and see everybody else's picture. So some of the uh, ways I've used this were when I asked them to draw the scene from the famous movie North by Northwest, where a man is being chased by a crop dusting plane. And I actually have the picture, the snapshot of that uh, that scene. So after they've actually drawn the picture, they can see you know, what, what I was referring to, but they can also see their friends. Uh, pictures and that's really uh, a lot of fun. Oh yes, the Japanese English dictionary. Yes, well, it's that was one of those little afternoon things I did one day that wasn't really programming. It was just kind of uh, figuring out how to incorporate the dictionary onto the uh, into the block. And uh, yeah, my, I, I still use it too. It's really really useful. This is another one of those uh, activities I was talking about, the database activities. And here I have um, uh, the students watch a video. And then after they've watched the video, they have to tell the story uh, in their own language, in their own English. So uh, students, we do this activity quite, quite regularly, so they're actually familiar with it. It's good for practicing past tense, and they enjoy listening to each other after, after they've actually watched the video. And I choose the best ones, and I, I play those in front of the class and say, hey, this is what didn't you think? Okay, and then we have pair assignments. So these are activities that are completed in pairs. So they work together to um, uh, to submit something. And what have we got here? This is interview your partner. So in this in this activity, 
students will, uh, rather than record themselves, they'll record their, their partner. So they point the web camera at their partner, and then they ask their partner questions. And this has, you know, the, the um, this overcomes to a certain extent the resistance that students have for video recording. They often don't like to, you know, you know sit in front of the camera and speak, and they, they, they kind of hide and they put their head down. Or, um, But this, this is a, a slight different twist on it because they're actually recording their, their partner. And because they're doing it together, it doesn't feel quite as um, intimidating and uh, works quite well. Another, another thing you can do is actually have the students describe a picture or describe an object. So you might say bring uh, a toy to class and they bring a toy to class and they have to hold the toy up in front of the camera and describe the toy or the, uh, the object. And it's kind of a show and tell thing. But again, it's kind of non, uh, non well, it's not so intimidating because it's not them in front of the camera, it's this thing. Um, and that, that's another, another way of, kind of lowering the resistance to recording. Once you've done recording a few times, that resistance goes away. But initially, you need, a, I think, a few tricks just to, you know, encourage your students to participate, um, you know, and not worry about it. Yeah, yeah, you could, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, roughly, I think you could turn the sound off, off of the video off and let them synchronize so easily. Yeah, that, that, that'd be kind of fun too. All right, and the last thing I want to talk about, do we have time? Got a little bit of time, good. Um, this is Poodle Pair Work, and this is my student's favorite Poodle thing, but it's probably the, the, the thing in, in, in Moodle, uh, sorry, in Poodle, that gets the least attention because you kind of need to have your own Red 5 server to do it. It's, it's just a little bit tricky to do on uh, using the public server, and it's also a little bit complicated for the administrator to set up. You need to kind of you know, set a few things up and... Uh, but it works very well. So once you once you're over the hump and you know how to do it, boy, it's really good. My students enjoy it more than anything else. Um, we put the students into audio or video pairs, and then uh, they can chat or share their whiteboard or just talk, you know, within that pair. Um, you know, the, the best way for me to demonstrate I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll show you a, a short video of me running a pair session, a dummy pair session. And then I'll get you actually go in there and we'll actually try and see if we can uh, talk to each other in pairs. I'll actually try and put you in a pair work session on, on the website. Okay, so that's, that's a, bit of a, a bit of a level up. I hope it works, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for the fact that it might not. Now let me just go here and check which of these ones we need there. Okay. And here's a video of the actual peer session of the administrating administering to, to open the admin console we click on the admin console link excuse my very quiet voice as uh, and that brings us here to the admin like console and uh, you can see there are a number of panels not all of these are meaningful these days but the peer work panel will show you how many users are in the online session uh, ready for peer work uh, this is not a real session, so now we don't have a, a number of students. If we click on the pair work button, we'll be taken to our pair work tab. And here we are on the pair work tab. So you can see on the left hand side we have the buttons to control the session. Over here we have a list of users who are in the session. This is uh, where the pairs show. We haven't created any pairs yet. Uh, we can choose a number of people to be in our pairs from the drop down list. Uh, let's make it pairs of two. So we click make pairs button and we have four pairs here. If we clear the pairs button, clear the pairs, we can make uh, groups of say four. Okay, and so in this way we can create different uh, sized pairs or groups. Uh, we can also move users between the pairs like this, or like this. Um, let's clear those. Now one thing you'll notice is that uh, we have this green border around the uh, this list here and also around the, the pairs that we've made. Let's make pairs of three for example. Okay, and this means that the pair session 
has not been sent out to the users yet. So this is uh, where we have yet to apply uh, these changes to the peer session. So for example, I may decide that these students should not be together or that uh, these students should be in a group of, uh, of two students. But we can make an empty pair and just add them in like this. Okay. And then when we are satisfied with the pair layout, we press the apply button and the pair information gets sent out to the users. Okay, I'll stop that there. I'm not sure how clear that is for, until you've actually tried it. So I'd like you now to actually give it a go, if you can. If you've logged into the uh, the demo course, I'd like you to go to um, there's an activity there called Poodle Pair Work. It's at the, the very bottom of the Moodle 2014 stuff section, and that contains a pair work widget. So you'll be able to see your own face there. Um, you might have to click the Adobe permissions dialog that shows up, or even the, the little Chrome permissions dialog that sometimes shows also. You might have to click. Once you can see your own face there, you're ready to go. And uh, once there's a few of you in there, I'll actually create pairs and I'll pair you up with somebody else. So if you haven't got a shirt on, put a shirt on. Um, put your beer down. And let's try that. I can, in my pair section here, I'll just check who's arrived in that pair thing. There's a couple of people there already. We've got, okay, we've got user 50 and user 10 are there. Um, Hopefully we get a few more. So that's the Poodle Pair Work activity there in the MOOC 2014 stuff uh, section on, on, on the MOOC 2014 course. Just two of you, I'll put the two of you in the session. Still just get two people here, so okay. Well, uh, if anybody arrives late, I'll put them in the session later. But let's try now. So I'll, I'll make pairs. So user 15 and user 10 are, are now in the session. And then I click the apply button, which I'll do now. Uh, hopefully, user 15 and user 10 can actually see each other, which would be nice. And I may be able to actually check that. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I can see. Well, I can see both of you actually talking. So well, that's probably Nelly and. Uh, Somebody else. Confusing. Okay, so well, uh, I have two people in the peer session. There. <laughs> Maybe you're too embarrassed to talk to each other. I'm not sure that yeah, I, I, I sprang that on you a bit quickly. Um, uh, if anybody else wants to go in there, I can put you in, in one of these Moodle peer sessions, Moodle peer sessions, and you can you can try it out. Um, but this day, I've just got the two people in there. So. Uh, I'll let you go. Uh, I'll let you go. Okay. Please say goodbye to each other. Okay. Wave goodbye. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, I guess most of us weren't weren't able to see that because there's only two people in the session there. But um, uh, we did actually have uh, a successful pair session to us, and that's uh, one of the really fun things about. Poodle, which I haven't really been able to uh, get other people to use so much because of the complexity of it. But um, if you're interested in using that, please let me know. Okay. All right. Well, that's the, uh, the the main part of the presentation over. If you have any questions, this is uh, five minutes or so for questions now. Please shoot, and I'll do what I can to answer your questions. My oh my video. So pause there with my hand on the back of my head. <laughs> Here. That's very. Here. It looks very relaxing, you know. Like the yeah. worst part is when you know it. It stops and your mouth yeah. is open or I've something. Um. You know that's. I hate that, but it happens, especially when you screen share. It's usually the result of screen sharing. That's why they suggest that you not screen share um, with your video webcam oh. open. I'll do it. Yeah, that's what happens. Oh really? Oh, I didn't. I didn't <laughs> it's know the oh, I must be the I Java. Uh, <laughs> must be the Java or something. But anyways, they're trying to get another screen sharing uh, yeah, apparatus, yeah, um, to fix things. 
So really is stuck there, right? Okay. Yeah, I just I just I just tried to refresh it. That's okay. I I don't think you need to see me. I, I'll um. <laughs> Uh, I'm got, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be invisible. So just uh, if you have any questions, uh, shoot away. I see probably people are still on the course because they um, uh, there hasn't been there hasn't been much chat for a while. Hmm. No, I think well, everybody's yeah, here. No, there's chat. been chat. Um, I wanted to ask you about um, the, what looked like a group, but it's it's yep. is this um, part of the uh, plugin, the pair work that I saw there on Moodle. Yes. So do I have that? Yeah, it's yeah you have that. Yes, you have that. Yeah, what? you just you just you know the if you just go into the the course that I have, then you can just you know copy the little the little uh, poodle widget filter stringy thingies that I uh, briefly introduced. Yeah, if you just mm. copy those, then you'll actually be able to do the same thing. I mean, into However, the HTML just over, the, over the greater internet, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if it over the greater internet, it doesn't. Um, a bit of lag, you know, in the real time kind mm -hmm. of communications between students. And if you're behind a firewall, it doesn't work so well. Mm -hmm. So it really works best when you have your own Red Five server as opposed to using the public one. Um, but but you know, you, know, you certainly can do it. Yeah, you can try it. Yeah, for sure. And you know, if if your results are good enough to use, you know, you can use it. But I and I always use it in my classes. But I have a, my own Red Five server right there in the hall, um, so I don't have to worry about those slowness issues really yeah. how do you get that i'll have to talk to you about that sounds really good to have a red hat server <laughs> red five server yeah yeah well i just i just uh yeah i make it easy for you i can, I can get you set up so i get people set up with their red five servers quite often um yeah but it, it's a little you know that's that's probably one of the things that poodle has been able to do is to hide a lot of the complexity from people with the video recording and that's why Probably it's become quite popular because it just seems to just work out of the box, um, uh, because you don't need a Red Five server for you know, video recording if you use Poodle. Other, I think most people here have. If you could just uh, put your thumbs up for those of you who have tried uh, Poodle. I guess uh, was it everybody? You did the poll on this, but I'm not sure. Because I think most of the people here are yeah, actually on the on the yeah. poll. I think it was yeah, sixty percent of the uh, respondents who they were poodle users. Adrian, Adrian hasn't uh, tried it yet. Susan does. Okay. Um, sorry, Adrian, you asked a question before. You said uh, where do I work? I work in a high school. Or I will be working in a high school until the end of next month. At which point, I, I've actually handed in my notice, which somebody Ralph, I think, referred to there. Um, yes, yeah, so I handed in my notice because I was a developer, and then I was a teacher, and then I was a developer, and then I was a teacher. So, you know, I've worn both hats for a while, but you know, the little things become so, you know, all what's the word for it? Um, all time consuming. I just it takes up all my time, even at school. I'm always seem to be on on poodle stuff, and it's not really my day job. You know, it's not my day job at all. So I, I'm going to try and concentrate on poodle and Moodle kind of development work. Um, using contracts and things, so uh, Poodle will continue to be developed. In fact, you know, hopefully, you know, you'll get more, more, more. Um, there'll, be, there'll be more work done on Poodle once I've left my day job. That's that's the plan, and you know, how that's going to work out financially, that's a little bit of an unknown. That's the, that's the jump off the cliff, but um, there's already a bit of you know interest from organisations and you know working closer with me. So hopefully. Um, That'll, that'll help. That's great. Things, you know. That's great news. And, and we'll do our best too because we love Poodle, Justin. We are so happy. I mean, all the participants of the Moodle for Teachers Evo for 2014 have been using Poodle and they love it um, because it's, it's perfect for, for language teachers. And I think it's perfect for everybody, but specifically for language teachers. So, um, yeah, um, really happy with it, and uh, we're looking forward to, to more. So, um, I hope yeah, you can continue. Well, um, yep, I'm really, really glad to hear that. Mm. Yeah, for, a, for a long time, I wasn't really sure how many people were using it because 
Um, I guess it was quite quite small, but you know, I guess as the emails to me increased and the number of kind of uh, times I see it, you know, on on forums at Move.org, you know, I realized it is being used uh, in quite a few places now. So and it will be a lot more, more a lot more. So get ready for lots of uh, you'll need to hire people to do the support. <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, All right. I'd like to thank you, uh, Justin, for um, sharing Poodle uh, with us. Okay. Yeah. On this Moodle um, MOOC three, and I'm looking forward to hearing more from you in the next uh, Moodle MOOC and uh, right. Moodle two point six. Uh, I'm curious, you know, as to how it's going to look on the editor if there is an editor or you know what it's going to look like so oh yeah yeah okay well thank you very much for having me on the MOOC I've really enjoyed being here thank um, you uh, it was a good chance for me to you know some things I don't really don't usually get to talk about the it does work on Moodle 2.6 already um and you can see it on the editor you have to kind of just click a button and the editor expands oh uh, you're right 2.7 things will change a little bit so, okay yeah, we'll see how that goes all right so thank you thank you everybody um I've tried to record this. My Camtasia crashed once when somebody went into the system. I don't know why. Uh, so it's going to be in two parts. Uh, Justin, it, you're invited to join. Tom has added the link to um, a discussion okay. form uh, somewhere yeah. there. Right. I think it's, mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. I don't know if you can see that. Yep. It's the top it. link. And thank you. Thank you so it's much. A bad request, but I'm... Yes, go ahead. A request. Oh, it says it says bad, bad request when I click on that link that Oh really? I put through that I get bad request, but bad request. Most okay, I'll, I'll, I'll probably just No, I think it's the first one. Yeah, I'm, I'm You mean you clicked on the first one and you got a bad request, was... Tom? Um oh you get that too, so there must be something wrong with that, Tom. I guess um it's um it's okay I'll, we'll figure it out you'll figure it out you always I'll, do I'll, I'll... um no it's good it's a good request yeah. wait a minute let me let me let me get this i extended the class and that's why it's not timing up there let me try to get that i don't know for me it worked that's the one that's the one and you go on the left it'll say course feed and course feed is actually the um the discussion for oh it works now okay so that's it. All right. Thank you, everybody. And good night to some of you. Good morning to others. And maybe good afternoon to even others. I'm not sure what time it is in your, in your area. So I see it's night for most people, Justin. So for you, it's the beginning of the day, is it not? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's 11 o'clock now. It's oh, okay. Just after oh, 11, good. So All right. I'm not, I watch my kids and do that. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you, you everybody. Bye-bye.